Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode with me Danny. Today's episode in Google Analytics is our first and it's dedicated to the admin part of Google Analytics. We'll get into that section right away. Hi and welcome back. Let's have a look at uh, Google Analytics uh, from this perspective. As you can see, there has been a few changes to the new interface. Uh, Google has gotten rid of some of the navigation that was placed here, moved everything into the admin part, and also into customization uh, menu here on the, on the left-hand side. And also you have access to the search right from here, which is great. Your main reports, the built-in Google Analytic reports are still pretty much the same. You have real-time, audience, acquisition, behavior, conversion. And for today's episode, we are focused on admin. So we click on admin, and these are the three sections that I wanted to uh, have a look and explain to you in, uh, in some sort of details. Your account. Uh, you can have multiple accounts, obviously. I have one account for my main business, which is Gate30. And uh, I have another account that I'm calling Lab Account for just the one-offs or some of the demo uh, uh, domains that I have. And this is how I uh, bucket my accounts into these two sections. Now, um, from an account perspective, you have uh, settings that you can modify here by changing your account name, for example. It could be your business name. And there are some terms and conditions that you can opt in or opt out of. And these include some of the uh, technical reports or whether you need some help from Google and uh, whatnot. Again, user management, this is essential because on this level, if you give permissions to certain users, and this is how you do it, uh, you see a list of users that have access to this account. You can add a permission by entering somebody's email. For example, if you have an email, let's say info, uh, infoworks uh, at gmail.com, assuming you have that, uh, you can add permission to that user and select right here what kind of permission you want to give. Do you want to give the utmost uh, permission which is managing users and do you want them to be able to edit uh, make changes to filters or something you want them to collaborate or just read and analyze for example I want them to only read and analyze because they are uh, some of my uh, analytics guy in the office so I could do that you can click here if you are interested in notifying the user that they have access now and they can go ahead and log in um, that's one thing you can do and the moment you add it you'll see it here in the list and the list is pretty simple if you ever want to delete let's let's just add this user for now I have a user called uh, webock.com at gmail.com I'm adding this user for analysis and I'm notifying the user so let's add him perfect as you can see you have the permissions here if you ever want to change them you can easily select deselect anything you want, click on save, changes get uh, implemented immediately. If you don't want to give access, you just hit the delete. There's a confirmation. Are you sure? Yes, delete or cancel, whatever your choice is. Now, filters. Filters are really important, but I wouldn't really add filters to this view uh, or to, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really add filters to uh, the accounts. I would add it on a view. History would tell me major changes. For example, if I added or modified a user, you have the history here. Trash can is basically uh, for uh, recycling some of the data and to keep your uh, data as clean as possible. You can hit the back button here and we are now moving on to properties. So. Our account is called Gate30, and under Gate30, I have multiple properties. Properties could be a website or 
It could be a subdomain of that website, for example, or it could be a completely different website. In my case, what I've done is Gate30 is the parent company that owns these other properties, which are ad, uh, hot ad, social layer, and web was. So what I've done is I've created each one as a separate property, and it makes sense because I don't want the data to be polluted among these uh, different properties. And that's the concept of properties. Properties do not share data together. And that's important to understand because if you ever want to um, merge data together, then you probably need to have those domains and subdomains under one property. And I will have a special advanced video in the future to uh, show you how you can implement uh, data in a nice way and show it in your uh, Google Analytics when you have multiple subdomains. So if you want to create a new property, you click here, add new property, and it asks me whether I want uh, to track a website or a mobile application. Here's where I put my website name. It could be anything. Let's assume that we are doing WebAuk. So it could be WebAuk. And then you can put your domain name right here. So be careful, sometimes your domain does not need to include the www. Um, check out with your uh, server administrator. Also, you can uh, select the type of category the business is in. So if you're doing web, you can select internet and telecom. You can do your uh, time zones here. Select, it's automatically selecting uh, Pacific time, which is great. And it says this account has four properties. You can have a maximum of 50. Great, and then you can say, get tracking ID. Uh, for this example, what I'm gonna do is just gonna select webock.net, get tracking ID. And this is the implementation that it's suggesting for me. Um, it has a generic one that is made of JavaScript. So you can select this code, copy it like this, and then paste it into your uh, header of your template. So if you're working with WordPress, for instance, you probably want to drop it in your header.php file. And again, it tells you exactly where you need to put it. So if you look here, it gives you instructions on where to put it. Uh, copy and paste this code in every web page that you want to track. And also, there's an implementation for a PHP uh, programming language if you're interested, but I prefer to just drop in the JavaScript wherever need, uh, where, whatever it needs to go. Um, in my experience, I generally uh, put it as the last section, or actually as the first section after the opening body of my pages. So that seems to be uh, the best place to put it, right after the opening uh, tag of the body. So that's it. Once I drop this uh, HTML, I can, uh, or once I drop this JavaScript, I can actually uh, load my web page and I would be able to start uh, receiving data into this property. So, pretty simple. Now, let's go back and assume that we're going to be working with, there you go, I'm going to gate 30 as my property, and let me show you some of the different sections underneath here. You have property settings. Again, this is where I put uh, whatever I just put, so if you ever need to make changes to your business industry category, you can go ahead and do it here. Gate 30 again is internet, so let me go ahead and select that. Um, and it tells me which default view do I need to load automatically. And I'm going to go into the views next, but if you have a particular view or more than one, then you probably want to select it here, and that makes going to that view instantaneous. This is an advanced setting, we'll get to it sometime later. It has to do with AdWords and the overriding of the UTM parameters. And we'll talk about that in a special video, don't worry about it for now. 
uh, enable demographics and internet reports. This is up to you. If you want to enable it, you'll get some more data about your users, such as their gender or age and some of their uh, specific interest based browsing. So I'm going to go and say yes. Um, I'm skipping this It's pretty advanced for you guys at least because today's video is a little bit uh, for beginners. Once I'm done with my changes, I can save it. I go back here. More sections to think about here. Uh, user management, again, if you want to give users access to only a particular subdomain or one of your do domains and not the whole bu a bucket of domains. For example, if we just want to give access to social layer, then you would select social layer and go to user management and then pick your choices from here. So if you want, you can actually uh, select who is seeing this particular. You can add a user here too. And remember, because WebAuk and Gate30 are users on an account level, which is the grandparent, if you want to call it, they have access automatically to all the properties that live within that account. So, no matter which account I choose, even if I choose WebWAS, for example, and I go to user management, I will see that these two users by default are there and there is no remove. I can't remove them. If I ever want to remove them, I would really need to go back and remove them from this level from the grandparent level. I'm okay with that, but if you want to send a user to a particular property only, for example, I want to give access only to gate30.com, then I can add a user to the particular here right now uh, and just do it. Um, anything, if you have another email, you can just type it in and it will populate here with a remove, so you have access to remove it. Now, this is pretty advanced. I'm going to keep it to a different uh, video, actually to multiple videos, because these are advanced within the JavaScript uh, tracking info. It's very advanced. We'll get to it later. Uh, this section, again, is AdWords linking and AdSense linking. All these are related to uh, advertising uh, uh, platforms by Google. So if you work with any of those, I'll have a special video. Watch out and I'll make it easy for you. If you're interested in any of those, once the video is out, I'm going to have links on this YouTube channel or on this YouTube video right away. Again, custom dimensions and data imports are also advanced. I'm keeping them for later. Now, the next third section is views. Views is essential, as mentioned before. I have uh, mentioned it before. If you have a new website, let's go to webawk.net. And in theory, you're supposed to have three views. Your unfiltered view, which includes all of your raw data. And this is the data you need to keep in, uh, uh, you keep as is, as reported by Google. And then let's do that. Uh, I keep my main one as unfiltered. And if you want a new view, I generally create an, a new one and call it master. And this is the view that I use all the time. Uh, just call it anything you want, but master seems to do the trick in making it very explicit that this is the main one. And in this view, I can apply filters. For example, if I want to exclude uh, users from my company, then I can add IP filter exclusion and apply it to the master view. That way I have my unfiltered view and also I have a master view that I have the reporting in the way that I want it to be. And another uh, view that I can create generally under uh, every property is what I call testing or test or sandbox, whatever you want. This is where I do my experiments. I want to experiment with a new filter. I go ahead and do it in test. And if it works fine, then I move it later into my master view without uh, doing any harm to my data, without jeopardizing my data. So under here, we have the view settings. And uh, again, uh, this is more details around 
uh, URL parameters. Uh, this is advanced, I will get to that uh, in a later video. Uh, user management. Again, you can give user access to a particular view only, which is great because, for example, you can create a view to show a very particular uh, specific section of your website. For example, you can create a view that includes only your e-commerce data, data from your store, and then you can give access to a particular user who is responsible to analyze and track data in the store only. You probably don't want to give him or her access to your whole website. So this is a great place to customize the users per view. Goals is an important section and this is the main section of Google Analytics. It's going to be a special video about it. Watch out for it. Uh, content grouping again, this is advanced. Filters. We've been talking about filters forever. We'll have a special video for filters, but this is where it goes. Um, again, channel settings, e-commerce settings. This is pretty advanced. I'll have special videos for it. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm trying to get through this quickly to kind of separate what is important for you from what is really advanced. So you don't need to make any changes to these sections, really, unless you are an advanced user. So. This is all you need to know about the admin section. Uh, the, really, this is the high-level view. You need to understand that once you need to do something specific, there is a specific video for it and a specific implementation, and we'll get to it in due time. Until then, uh, take care and watch out for our next video, which will be around the uh, audience. Audience is our next section in the uh, beginner's tutorials for, ad, uh, uh, for, for Google Analytics. Until the new video, take care.